sing this at the palm. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Sing this at the palm. The very name itself uh, speaks of charity, a kind of a true and a universal charity, which has as its object anyone who is any, in any need, whether it be corporal or spiritual. St. Vincent de Paul is one of those odd saints to whom the world gives a pass. And he's acceptable under the uh, title of philanthropy, but St. Vincent de Paul was no philanthropist. All that he did, and he did almost everything that could be done to relieve any kind of need, he did out of the love of God. He did out of the fruit of his own immense and amazing, beautiful, deep and profound spiritual life, and he did under the inspiration of God the Holy Ghost. He was born in 1581 when our saint of the sick yesterday, Saint Camillus of Lullis, was a teenager and during the reign then of Pope Pius, Saint Pius V. He was ordained a priest as a, as a very young man, about 19 or 20 when he was ordained, and the Holy Ghost soon put him in all these different situations so he could see the need, so he could be himself formed. First of all, his first great adventure was falling into the hands of the Turks. He was uh, captured on the seas and enslaved for a couple of years in northern Africa. He ended up with a, a renegade Christian, and he was able to convert him and one of his wives, and uh, then he and his master fled back to France. And that led to his uh, great zeal for the conversion of the Mohammedans, and he got after the king to establish missions in northern Africa, and also his great love and tender care for all of those who were enslaved. He himself became, uh, later on, the chief chaplain of all of the galley slaves of France. He did a wonderful work there, sometimes quietly and discreetly, and sometimes very publicly with great processions of the Blessed Sacrament in order to convert the pagan slaves and to bring comfort to the Christians and the strength of the sacrament. For a number of years, he was chaplain to a very wealthy noble family, the family of Bondi in France. And um, in that position, once, he was uh, called upon to give uh, the last rites to a dying man. And he had the grace, as St. Camillus did yesterday, to see that that man hadn't made a proper confession. He had made sacrilegious confessions. And he, as he was instructing him and preparing him to make the right confession after many bad years, why, it dawned on him how ignorant the poor people were in the country. No one was really taking care of them. That then, to became the object of his charity, the order of priests that he founded in particular, were to help to form and to influence the country clergy so that the people in outside of the big cities would not be neglected, so that everyone would learn the basics of the faith and how to save his soul. The next thing he was, for just about five months, he was a parish priest under the influence of Father de Beru, who was uh, the great founder of the oratory in France. He wanted him to accept the parish, so he did. And in five months, he was able to entirely reform the parish. So great was his holiness. At that time, it came to his notice about a poor family. There was some family that was in need. So and at the announcement of the Sunday Mass, he mentioned the need of this family. Well, immediately, all of the people of the parish, practically, went out to shower all sorts of goods, uh, money, food, perishables, upon this family. After Vespers that Sunday, the saint walked out to see how they were doing. And he saw all of this abundance, and it occurred to him, somebody needs to organize this, because the family will perhaps be tempted to eat too much, and then they'll have nothing at all to eat in, in, a, in a few weeks' time. So he began that idea of organizing and systematizing the work of charity and, at the same time, of giving assistance to the poor, uh, the poor men to be able to be trained to hold a job so they could support their family. The great works of charity of St. Vincent de Paul uh, for, um, for the laity, as well as the daughters of charity for dedicated uh, women, had their origin here. Finally, then he went to Paris, because Paris was the center of everything, and he had a tremendously great influence upon the King Louis XIII and upon all of the working of the church in France. He saw that the great need was for uh, not only picking up orphans on the street and organizing works of charity in that sense, 
really things right to hand, but he saw that the great need was again to form the priests. And so in his the religious order, uh, he was able to have a tremendous influence, at least to a certain degree in some cases, but sometimes a very great influence over the formation of priests so they would be less unworthy of their spiritual task. At the same time, in his own spiritual life, he was sick, he suffered, he was terrible acts of penance. <coughs> he was a man dressed a bit like St. Francis de Sales, whose friend he was. That is to say, by nature, he was a little irascible. He was a bit grumpy at times by his own personality. But he conquered all of that with such a sweet, sovereign, and a supernatural charity that people would never know that about him. To read his writings, to read his examples, to be edified is to enter into another world, a supernatural world, but a world that has its feet planted firmly on this earth, that is to say, all of the possible deeds of charity. He said more than once that we ought to be concerned about our own eternal salvation if we do not attend to the needs of our neighbor. And he very often used to love to tell the daughters of charity, he said, Sorte de vous même, leave yourself. Don't just worry about yourself and your own spiritual life and your own little narrow concerns. Think about others. Think about God and his glory. Think about the poor who are in want. Help them, and you yourself will be helped tremendously in your own spiritual life. The scene of universal charity, let us ask him to take us under his protection today to give us the grace that's a good basis of the spiritual life, not just to think about ourselves and our narrow concerns, but others, too. We maintain the proper balance, then. Uh, our Lord will use these occasions to sanctify us and to get himself a little bit more glory by the relief of Christ in his suffering brethren. The prayer to St. Vincent de Paul. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. O glorious St. Vincent, heavenly patron of all charitable associations, and father of all the unfortunate, who in thy lifetime did not reject anyone who had recourse to thee, See now by how many evils we are oppressed. Come to our assistance. Obtain from our Lord help for the poor, solace for the sick, consolation for the afflicted, protection for the abandoned, charity for the rich, conversion for sinners, zeal for priests, peace for the church, tranquility among nations, and salvation for all. May all feel the effects of thy merciful intercession so that, sustained by thee in the miseries of this life, we may be able to join the above, where there will be no more strife, lamentation, or sorrow, but joy, exaltation, and beatitude forever. Amen. St. Vincent de Paul, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.